In this videos, we're going to look on the very basic functionalities inside the application like Vue. But this is also will apply to other one because it's will look how to work with some more node based functions, editors, creators, but this can be applied to any other applications, Unity, Unreal, uh, Cinema 4D, any other ones who using node based type of the functionality. And uh, we'll start from the basics. So if you're already very familiar and other ones, I don't know if you find interesting this tutorials or videos maybe will be nice. But overall, how I say we'll start from beginning and kind of look on the concept first, how it's working. And also specifically on a view, we'll look how the functions work and how they benefit us to add additional functionality. So right here we have our application Vu, and if you're not familiar with interface, I will highly recommend you to watch my previous videos when we're going over interface of the Vu. So functionality it is in a Vu, it's when you can create complex interactions inside the different components and functions accessible through the objects. For example, right here we have an object, we can access functionality to there. Also, in Atmosphere Editor, we can access functionality from there. We can access functionality directly from the objects by clicking and open our Graph Editor or Function Editor. So it's multiple ways. But don't worry right now and be overwhelmed with location. As we're going along, we find what function access, what is Graph Editor or Function Editor, how they different from different places and how they apply it. So the one common what we're going to do, it's using function editor inside the materials. So let's right here go and create a sphere. And I'll just place it sphere, make it a little bit bigger. And put it up front of our camera. Next, we're going to open our material editor. And you have multiple ways you can do it. One, we're going to just double time click on material icon. And you can see right here we have our material editor. If you are in basic mode like this, I will recommend you just to click Advanced Material Editor. This will provide us with much more functionality that accessible. Very brief about material editor. You'll notice right here we have a different tabs which represent different type of the channel or properties and options for the specific material that applied to this object or multiple objects. And also this is type access can be changed depend on what type of materials we're using. If we're using PBR, you can see we have a different type access. If we're using the two side material mix it or ecosystem volumetric material, the elements is changing. However, for example, we'll work just with a simple materials right now. And you notice in some properties as we're working, we can edit through the function editor or edit graphical editor or some not. Like in this current situation, you can see right here, we have a button called edit graph. If we're going, for example, to the displacement, we don't see any access. Let's select displacement by procedural. And in procedural, we also, in some case, you will see icon where you can click and access um, function editor will be on a side and best probably let me show it till we speak about this. This icon if we're going to inside our editor. Let's go to add just new cloud. And right here if you see this kind of icon, it means we can add and drive this by the function. So we can go in graphic editor different way. So we have some icon which represent and you can see in some case right here in highlights we have these icons as well. It's meaning this specific property, we can click and directly going for this property inside our function. Or you can same, just click on edit graph. And now we inside the graphic editor or function editor, whatever you call it. Let's look roughly what we have right here. Notice it is two different tabs. Advanced editor, we can still go back and we have it also our graphic editor. Okay, in our graphic editor, Let's look overall what we have on all this. On the top bar, we have a different type of the fast functionality we can access. If you enable fast tip, you can roll over and it will tell you what it can do. 
For example, this one we can preview graph if we uncheck preview is done. We also can preview our nodes and right here let me drive in and this will change and showing us depend what we selecting. This is I will say a little bit more advanced so at the first step don't worry about this. Just close it. All what you at the beginning what we needed it's preview what we have right here. And of course next we have it create node, add node, save, load it, cut, copy, undo, redo, um, add, include. We also have it all functionality to focus, zoom in, zoom out. In many cases we you can probably use them but we can do everything from one our window we can preview. To actually preview inside our window with the structures you can use it scroll window or of course you can use it plus and minus our uh, zoom in zoom out to look closer. You can use it right button of the mouse click and hold and you can drag around and by using left mouse you can go around and select specific node select single or select a group. So this is one why I put it first this is our workspace. This is where we have it, our nodes and we can connect between nodes to have a different functionality. On the left you'll notice we have a window which is have it all these different type of nodes. And first time when you look there are a lot of lot of different ones you can get lost and confused with them. So we don't just open and we'll won't go by and by one each of them because most of them you probably will never even use it or if you highly special you may be used in some different ones. We'll just look on some that is most common and will help us. By the way all of these nodes when you start looking at them you can access on your field by just right clicking anywhere on a field and here we go we have it our expandable menu where you can go and select all of these nodes. So exactly the same nodes what we have it in our view on the left we can access by floating menu by right clicking anywhere except the nodes on empty field. Okay. So let's look right now what we have in our workspace by default. You notice we have it our nodes on the left, nodes on the right and nodes on the middle. Some of these nodes like on the left they don't have it any connections from the left side. This is our input nodes and the flow is going from left to right. So input signal coming from left passing through the specific filters and effect which is representing showing on our right side. Example the position of the object connecting to our coloring for alpha and go to the color. Notice even we click before and we went from the highlights edit we can still in our node editor access to all these properties. So it's kind of nice because we don't need necessarily go back select another ones we all can do from here. And here is our first things what we're going to do. We have it our position. Let's just delete this node and delete node we just need highlight and click a delete button. Now we disconnect it and if we look right in preview you can see our object it's basic gray because it's no color assigned. So let's go ahead and assign some different color to this and we can do this by creating color and we can use it like color map or different color variations or a single color. So it's up to you. Let's go right now we just use the color map and we'll go ahead and color map you'll notice as we selecting on the bottom now we have it properties and this is properties will change depend on what type of the node it is. Right here we have a small icon which represent color map. So if we go and click and right click it says edit color map. Now we open additional menu where we can preview this color map. Color map is just a gradient and gradient begin from left to right 0 to 1. This is internal view numeric so if we access we can change. So example let's go just for now we won't go anything crazy we'll just select red and red 
on two areas. Oops, actually right here. Let me go select the red right there. There you go. So we have just red, red color. We'll click OK. But you notice if it's even showing for us red, but it does not a kind of coloring our object in red color because we need to connect this. What does happen if I take this color, left click and drag and notice now I have this uh, string kind of attaching allowed us drag around and we can connect this to different properties. But it's very tricky a little bit sometimes because we actually have three different values here. We have a color value, we have a vector value x, y and z positioning and we have a numeric one, two, three because this is color and this is not necessarily will connect to everything but it will connect to our color and as we connect it you can see it's connect from one to another to color let's go ahead and click OK now okay so sometimes it's take a little time till it's refreshed or updated we need to go back let's go again we'll click on our sphere go to edit let's go to edit graph and right here is our color that we just currently assign. So this is what's straightforward. Just create the color and assign this color to our object. How I said before, of course we can modify and we can control with this. So let's look how we can easy control this. Right here we have a color map. We'll go to edit color and let's set instead this color We'll go set blue. Let's click OK and click OK again. Notice it's purple. The reason why it's a purple because it's take median value. We don't have any input or anything that it tell our object to use its specific color. And if we just done with that function editor, we have a very limited way how we can do. Even if we're going inside and select like gradient or other things it actually do on a back end on a background or function editor similar what we're going to do so to control this we have it several options one of course we can go and connect to the uh, position but notice right here what comes says no compatible input found the reason is why because this is a you can see kind of color blue which is says it's wait for the number but this input is a red and remember it says it's a vector so red is a vector green is a color and blue is a number we could connect to with altitude because it's related to number and notice as when I select with altitude it's how high it does change is going from red to blue and altitude we also will depend on the um, connection so on the mapping currently it's world standard of course, if you switch to object standard, it will change and so on. Okay, let's go back right now, edit graph. But instead altitude, we maybe want to do something more interesting and complex. So let's go select this node and you can select by clicking on this left click and click delete. This will remove the connections between those two nodes. Now we're back to our color. So let's do this way. Let's right click anywhere and we're going to fractal. And we're going to simple fractal. Notice as we create simple fractal or any other fractal, by default the will connect to the positions or other things. We can same select and delete it, but currently we want to have it our fractal connected to position. This way, fractal will generate it and randomize based on where the object created. Notice on output. Output right here is a blue color and input is blue color. So let's go ahead and connect those two. As we're connecting, you can see it's changed. It's now different color. Even on the preview, you can see how they are different. Some of them bigger, red, blue, other dots. Of course, if we're going to select our fractal, we'll have it more options in our option win uh, window or area just below. We have it for this specific fractal, all these different properties. Don't get overwhelmed about all these properties. We'll go look on them later as we're going to use some fractals and other elements. But just 
Keep in mind the different type of the node will have a different type of the properties they can modify. So in this case, let's go just pop up our roughness. And notice as we pop up, even here in preview, it's changed. You can see how we... Let's go to decrease our large features. Just see if it's... Mm, I don't like it. I think increasing with maybe locally a bit better. So let's go bring higher our large features. Okay, we can also increase gain, which will have it a little bit contrast specification will go. Okay, you know, maybe even a little bit less on the gain slightly. And you can see right here we start controlling. But here is a more right now. We just call, work with the colors. We just stick the color and we control it by the fractal, how it will display in our preview. But what's happening if I take this node from the simple and it connect to the alpha? It seems like same thing. So let's go connect and look what's happening. Because alpha will go on with transparency and what was blue or in this case, let's look what our blue was representing. It will represent higher value, one and zero. It's now invisible. And it's become transparent. So we can use it this way to have it kind of interesting clouds or other covering to do. But you can see how it's already create more imagination to create different areas and you can create. You can preview right here. You don't necessarily need attach this to um, the fractal we have it. We can also go and create different fractal. So let's go to create maybe another simple fractal and connect that fractal now to the alpha. And now we'll have it total different transparency because it's independent from other ones. So let's increase roughness on this one. And now we have it a little bit um, going around blue, red, and someone's, and a transparency applied. So, of course, we can add more and more complexity. We can add all over different, and that's what we're going to do this in time. Right now, what I want to do is just very simple, showing you that we have input nodes. We also have all these different type of the modifying nodes that we can have fun with, and we also have it output nodes. And is, uh, when I mentioned about output nodes before we finish kind of this video, let's very fast look what the nodes represent. It will represent color, alpha, bombs, display. Even they don't showing all of the nodes here, you have much more output and controlled nodes. Remember, some of these nodes you can select right, me right menu output. You can access right here, create your output mode, even they don't display it. Notice we have one, two, three, four, five, six, yeah? And if we look here, we have much more output nodes. We can create them this way, or we can go inside our material editor. And if we, for example, just click on this mode, it will create for us this new node. So you can go both way um, and just let you know it's no different between accessing nodes from connectors, then we have them by the, our properties or by right clicking, going to output and select from here. For example, right here, our highlight intensity is exactly the same as what we just selected. Again, right now, what you want to do probably is just go ahead and play around. Don't worry, you cannot break the view this way. You can just play around, but just explore, see what kind of properties you have it on material editor, how you can connect them and a different options. So in the next videos, we're going to explore a little bit more on different type of editors and also on some additional functionality. Thank you for watching this video.